Before we get started with today's podcast, I want to take this opportunity to ask you when the last time it was that you changed out the air filter in your home. Now, would you believe that most people don't change out their air filters monthly or even know that they have to change them out monthly or until they realize that something is actually wrong with their HVAC system? That's why I want to introduce to you Second Nature Air Filters. Now, what's so special about them? Not only are they effective at capturing the dust, pollens, the molds, uh, you know, the, the bacteria, but they also help reduce the energy usage of your HVAC system up to 15% and avoid costly repairs whenever it matters the most. But let's be real. The real reason you're not changing your air filters, duh, is because you forget half the time. You're like how I used to be. That's why I went with Second Nature Air Filters. Second Nature has created a subscription plan to send your home's air filters Each month, right to your door, which forces you to change out your old air filters before the new one arrives, keeping your air clean and your HVAC system in working condition. I've certainly noticed that regular replacement of my home's air filters has reduced the amount of dust flying around in my place, but has also reduced how much I've been sneezing in my place. Before, I was changing out my air filter every three months, and I was sneezing constantly. Now that I change out my filter monthly... I hardly ever sneeze. This is all thanks to Second Nature's filter subscription plan, and it's the one delivery that I actually look forward to every month. Get started with Second Nature Air Filters today with my referral link at thepodcasttherapist.com slash second nature. Mixed Down Media Productions. Today's episode of The Podcast Therapist is brought to you by the Adobe Creative Cloud. Creativity is everywhere, and all you need are the right tools to turn those creative ideas into reality. Whether it's building stunning new artwork to promote your podcast, editing simple videos for your video podcast, or stepping up your audio production game, the Adobe Creative Cloud gives you access to Adobe's entire suite of software products that will enhance your content creation across all digital platforms. Go to thepodcasttherapist.com slash Adobe to learn more and get started today. Today, we're going to be talking about building new skill sets for your podcast, specifically in the area of graphic design, especially if you're starting your podcast for the very first time. This is a skill that can be very valuable. When you're one unbalanced piece of audio from losing your this is the podcast therapist. Welcome back to another episode of The Podcast Therapist. I am your host, The Shan Man, or you can call me Shannon Hernandez. I'm a radio broadcaster, podcaster, and a podcast producer, and your podcast therapist. Hopefully here to give you the answers that work best for me, but might also work best for you as well. In today's episode, like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be talking about uh, building brand new skill sets for your podcast. Now, this is an area where I think a lot of podcasters They are struggling because it comes down to graphic design and a lot of us don't know how to use uh, graphic design programs. They don't we don't know how to use Photoshop. We don't know how to use uh, Adobe Illustrator. And these are some of the the programs, actually, the applications that uh, really take everything to the next level. Now, I I realize that there are apps out there that can do a lot of the stuff. Uh, There are. Uh, different SaaS products that are out there, uh, softwares of service like Canva and whatnot. We're going to talk about them here after a little while, but I do realize that those exist, but not all the time do those graphics make the impact visually for you and your podcast. And, you know, as we know, podcasting, we know podcasting is obviously very auditory. We're, we're hearing sounds and hopefully those sounds can translate into some type of branding. But when it comes down to the promotion of your podcast, we can't rely on things like video because, you know, it's not all the time. Can we do a video podcast? Not all the time. Can we sit down and record a video podcast? And it doesn't make sense for us sometimes. So that's where we have to jump in, maybe make something that promotes it a little bit differently. So uh, I want to dive into that today. And I want to talk to you about my philosophy. And I, I don't know if it's a philosophy that will really impact you, but it was something that uh, was inspired by uh, a book that I am rereading right now called Relentless by Tim S. Grover. He was Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant's strength and conditioning coach back in the day. And so uh, if you've ever, uh, if you've never had a chance to listen to that book or even read that book, I highly recommend it. If you're finding yourself uh, stuck in any area in which you might be struggling with your podcast, uh, that area might be in motivation. It might be in, you know, building new skill sets. And that's why today I wanted to focus on why we build new skill sets 
uh, outside of the audio realm of building podcasts, okay? This is something that I think is very important. Uh, I, I personally find it very important. I don't believe in being one-sided in terms of uh, building content. Uh, I, I do my best to try to be well-rounded. This is a, a lesson that my father has really tried to instill in me, and he's tried to say, you know, it's it's going to be a well-rounded human being uh, to be able to do a little bit of everything. And you're going to hear that there are entrepreneurs out there, there are life coaches, there are everyone out there, uh, people telling you how to start a business, and they're going to tell you that you need to focus on one thing at a time, and just being an expert at that one thing. But not all the time, and are those people right? You know, I'm going to say that, you know, well, maybe they are making six figures, six figures more than what I'm making. But what I like to look at uh, the value in terms of who I am as a human being, and what I can do and the ropes that I have had to be up against, that all comes in the form of playing with the pigs, getting down into the dirt and learning how to build out a new skill set to know and put myself in someone else's position to know how difficult it was or maybe how easy it was to build a piece of content, especially in the area of graphic design. So uh, as we jump into today's topic, we're going to get a lot more deep into this particular topic. Now, before we jump into today's topic, I want to invite you to check out a rocket book. The Podcast Therapist is powered entirely by Rocket Books. It's a reusable notebook that you use special pens with. They're called friction pens. And what you do is you basically take all of your notes in these notebooks. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and grab the Rocket Book app and scan your notes into the cloud. And then what you can do is all you do is just get some water and a cloth that they give you when you get your own Rocket Book and you wipe clean all of your notes while they're already saved into the cloud. This is a great way to reuse your notebook again. And of course, you can uh, save the planet with as well. There's different types of notebook, notebook varieties. There's the core, which I have the core. It's a smaller notebook. Also, the fusion, which is like a planner. And they have many others, the matrix, the flip. And then there are these things called beacons. If you're someone who likes to do things on dry erase boards, you put these beacons on the corners of your dry erase board and you can still use the app to you know, take pictures of those particular uh, notes and save them into the cloud. Rocket books are really, really amazing and very cool for not only the podcaster, but also maybe someone who's working in a corporate environment. Rocket book is powering the next generation of ideas. Save your notes and save the planet with Rocket book. You can get one over on my affiliate link at thepodcasttherapist.com slash rocket book. So let's go ahead and jump into today's topic and how, why I came up with this idea of building new skills with graphic design. Now, I think it's very important to know that uh, I'm not a super pro at graphic design. There are some really amazing graphic designers out there that know a lot of skills when it comes down to using programs like Adobe Photoshop, maybe Adobe Illustrator, or other vector programs that are out there. Does it mean that you have to use them? Not necessarily, but the reason why I bring up these particular apps, especially when you're using something from Adobe or the Adobe Creative Cloud, is that these seem to be the industry standard when it comes down to developing graphics and graphic design. Likely, you are the person who is probably just developing very simple graphics, probably through Canva. Maybe you're doing it through another application. And by all means, doesn't it doesn't mean that those applications or softwares as service don't do a great job. I've seen some amazing artwork built in Canva, and I think that you could do probably just the same. But when it comes down to the little details of customizations with artwork, then it might get a little more complicated for you. There may be times whenever you need to create an image that needs to have a transparent background. Well, you can do that in certain programs, but it might cost you. So just know that what I'm sharing with you today are based on the experiences or the experience. That's the one thing that I want to share with you is the experience that I went through when it came down to learning how to use vector graphics programs or Photoshop. All right. When I talk about vector graphics, I'm talking about Adobe Illustrator because that is the industry standard when it comes down to uh, developing graphics. All right. So graphic design is used for 
multiple purposes. Okay. So when we think about our podcast, we we're, we're really focused on just the audio portion, right? We're really focused on the editing. That's what I think a lot of podcasters, they get, they get the rocks off about this. Like, oh my God, I get to create a podcast. It's all, you know, whether that be about like a podcast that is uh, storytelling, or maybe it's a podcast that sounds more like it's uh, on the radio, very similar to what this podcast sounds like the podcast therapist. Either way, whenever people jump into audio itself they get very excited but what they're missing is that audio design or audio editing is just one part of that equation it's one part of the podcasting equation and when we have an equation that has the right variables or i wouldn't even say the right variables because i don't even know if equations have right variables but when you have the equation that has the the variables that are available to you you can create Not only a quality audio product, but a quality visual product. So we want to focus on not only the audio side of things, but also the visual side. Because this is how we are going to promote our podcast, visually. We won't always be able to use video. We won't always be able to go in and record a video podcast. Maybe you are a solo podcaster. Solo podcasters, maybe they don't want to record themselves. Maybe they just need some type of image to promote their podcast. Well, how do we do that? We're going to talk about that here in a second, all right? So let's talk about the things that, or I guess the designs that you would be using for graphic design when it comes to you and your podcast. These are all applicable. These are all things that I ended up discovering down the line over time without anyone telling me. Someone maybe had had referenced it at one point in time or maybe kind of glossed over it but they were the things that ended up becoming more important than what they were really talking about what these other people were talking about okay so number one graphic design is used for yeah your podcast artwork your podcast artwork is going to be the one thing that is going to promote you and your podcast it's going to be showing up in the apple podcast store uh spotify Stitcher, Google Podcasts, uh, TuneIn. It, it's going to go to all these syndication platforms. And if you don't have a solid podcast artwork uh, square, then it's not really going to get recognized. Now, does it mean that I think that my podcast artwork is the best? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. It's not, I don't know if, if it is, but it is something that really fits, I guess, more towards my brand. And I'll explain to you, hopefully, uh, how I came to the decision of how my podcast artwork came to be. But graphic design is going to apply with your podcast artwork. Number two, it's going to apply to the graphics that are going to show up on your website. So when you develop a build, excuse me, when you develop and build a skill of graphic design, you can really take advantage and really kick your website's graphics into high gear. You have so much flexibility when you learn the skill of graphic design for your podcast website. This also jumps into number three. You're going to need to have graphic design skills, whether it be in Canva or Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. You're going to need them for number three, your website's SEO image. What is the SEO image? Likely you have seen the SEO image if you're not familiar with the search engine optimization image, okay? The SEO image is what excuse me, is what you see whenever, say, you're on Facebook and someone shares an article out uh, from, say, I don't know, we could say the Wall Street Journal or New York Times or whatever it may be, okay? Or your favorite website, maybe it's Upwork. And that rectangle that shows up, that is the SEO image that is showing up on your website. It's kind of, I don't know, how would you explain it? It is hidden inside of your website's post or your pages. There's a specific area where you would put the SEO image. In WordPress, I believe you're using the Yoast plugin to put these SEO images up there. For me, I use Kajabi. My website is Kajabi, and they already have a field where they say this is where you should be filling out that or or uploading that artwork into your not only blog posts, but your pages. The SEO image applies to every page on your website. If you have a blank image, then it shows up ugly on social media platforms, whether you're sharing on Facebook, whether you're sharing on Twitter, whether you're sharing on Pinterest, it's gonna show, you know, it it just is going to make a, a big difference when it comes down to you and 
your podcast artwork. So graphic design really applies to this very critical key image for your website. What are we on? Number three, I believe. Or no, we're on number four. Uh, you're going to be using graphic design for your promotional images to promote your episodes. So I have a video on my website uh, that I will try. I'm going to write down right here on my notes at, in real time. We're going to put in uh, headliner videos. I'm going to write headliner on my notes. So what I'm referring to with headliner is that I did a video series on YouTube on my YouTube channel that talked about building out promotional images to share out for your podcast. So there was this program called Headliner that I had talked about a few years back. Those videos are still very relevant to this day. They probably need to be updated a little bit, but basically what a headliner uh, image is, is basically it's a square box. It could be a square box or it could be a rectangle and you can put waveforms on top of an image that you have created with embedded audio that you could share onto Instagram, you could share it to Facebook, you could share it to Twitter, wherever you want. And this is a great way to build a body of work to put onto your social media, especially when it comes down to Instagram. We see more and more people using Instagram as a means to promote. Hopefully we can get an Instagram uh, a pro, an expert onto this uh, program to share why Instagram is important for you and your podcast and how you can promote on your podcast. But just so you know, Headliners app or the headliner app, that is going to be one of the opportunities for you to create not only a moving image with audio in a sense, but is going to give you the opportunity to build out artwork for headliners so that you can embed that artwork into your headliner. I'm going to leave a link for those videos in today's show notes on this particular podcast. So make sure you go ahead and check them out, whether you're on Apple Podcasts or maybe you are on Spotify. You can find that link down there in the description of this particular podcast. So we're going to be using graphic design to create promotional images to promote our episodes, specifically headliner. Number five, I believe we're on number five. I've lost count, but I just, I know I have six points here that I want to make. We are going to be using graphics to create skins for your live stream, whether that be lower thirds or what, or they're called chirons if you want to get technical, but we I used to call them lower thirds. People in the news industry call them chirons. We're going to create skins for your live stream that could be used on either StreamYard, maybe that's re, uh, excuse me, it's Restream, uh, and these lower thirds can be uh, used and and broadcast over these platforms into say Facebook or YouTube Live, Twitch. Uh, Periscope, LinkedIn, all of these. And there is nothing better and nothing more legit than to have something that is a lower third that looks legit. Or maybe it's, you know, a lower third might be an overlay that uh, has your branding on it. You know, maybe it says the podcast therapist or it says your brand, whatever it may be. Or maybe in the top right hand corner of the screen, the video screen, you might have that uh, you might have that uh, logo image on the top right hand corner of your logo. This is where graphic design really comes in handy for you and your podcast. And number six, I know there's six because here it is. Number six, this is the one I've been waiting for. Graphic design is used for building out merchandise if you decide you want to create it. Graphic design is used for merchandise if you decide you want to create it. Maybe you are a podcaster who has a pretty decent audience. Maybe you were an influencer and you decided to go ahead and build out this platform on TikTok. And now you want to go jumping into podcasting. And with podcasting, you want to be able to promote clothes. Maybe you want to promote t-shirts with sayings on them. Maybe you want to build out hats. You want to, you want to produce hats. Well, you need a graphic designer to do that. You could very well hire someone else out to do this but you can do it yourself. I promise you that you can do it yourself because you have the motivation, you have the skill set, you have you have what is within you to develop and build a new skill set of graphic design to build out merchandise if you decide to do so. It's very important for you to build out these skill sets, all right? So like I said, I'm not a professional graphic designer. I know enough to be dangerous. And what I ended up doing is that's how I ended up learning graphic design. 
I learned graphic design specifically through, well, it was through necessity, but I also developed it because I, it helped me earn the amount of money that I needed in a very tense situation. Let's get into that on today's mix down right here on the podcast therapist. We'll be right back. Therapist. To a lot of you, coffee is the nectar of the morning wake up gods, right? I totally love that feeling just like you of being awake, especially as I get older, adulting tends to get a little bit harder. It wasn't until I made a visit to the doctor a few years back and I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and I had to give up all of the caffeine in my life, including coffee. You see, even though caffeine can wake you up and make you feel alive for some part of the morning, it also has side effects like the jitters, anxiety, and you'll get terrible sleep, all of the things that I was experiencing. That's when I discovered mud water. Mud water is a coffee replacement with one-seventh the caffeine of coffee that actually gives me energy, focus, and immunity without jitters, crashes, or a downside. So what's in it? Mudwater is a mixture of herbs, spices, and magic mushrooms that dial in on your immunity, boost your clarity, creativity, and your mood. I can't tell you how much of a difference it has made in my life in the last few months. So lose the jitters and find more focus with Mudwater. Get your Mudwater starter kit today at thepodcasttherapist.com slash mudwater. That's thepodcasttherapist.com slash M-U-D-W-T-R to learn more and get your first can and frother today. Mixdown. It's time for the Mixdown. The Podcast Therapist. Welcome back to the Podcast Therapist, and let's jump right into the Mixdown. This is the time where we get to take all the layers of ideas that are all laid out for you in specific order and share with you how we come to the conclusion or we mix it down into the final product or the final idea. The mix down is the area in which I share with you all of those little steps for you. So in the last segment, I talked to you about that I wanted to share with you the history of graphic design from my perspective. How did I get involved in it? And it really uh, was something that came out of, I guess, necessity. It was an area in which I really needed to get a final result for a particular, I would say problem, I guess it was what I had. Uh, you're going to learn about that here in this uh, particular story in the mix down. So I have some points here and I guess I want to walk you through that timeline of how I learned graphic design, starting from the very basic of me just struggling and stumbling along with learning graphic design to the point to where I could just do graphics on my own and be good enough to be dangerous. Okay. So I want to take you back a few years ago. Um, In fact, let's take you back about, I'd say, what are we in, 2020? So let's say about 2015. This is about the time whenever I was really jumping in and getting really good with a WordPress site. Now, I had a WordPress site, uh, but I couldn't afford a graphic designer. So I decided to go ahead and start exploring and doing research to find Uh, different graphics programs. There were a number of them out there that you could use. There were different apps that you could use for your phone, but it just made everything look, uh, I don't know, bulky, generic. I didn't really like it compared to what I was seeing online, compared to who I was looking at uh, in terms of uh, influencers at the time. But I I didn't want to hire a graphic designer because graphic designers, they cost a lot of money. Graphic designers back in the day, I mean, I don't know what their rates are now, but they were ranging anywhere between $100 per design to $1,000 per design. It just really all depended on who you were going to. And uh, those are pretty legit, valid Uh, prices to get a design done if you know what the concept is for your podcast. But if you're someone who's like me, where you come up with the idea, but then you want to see it tweaked a certain way, graphic designers may not work out for you. So that's why I wanted to explore looking for different pieces of software. So what I did is I went into Google, like most people did, and I did a search uh, for designing software, graphic software. And I ended up testing up Uh, I ended up testing a free open source software 
uh, for ve- vector graphics. I can't even remember the name of the program anymore because it just it. I just don't even use it anymore. Uh, But it's probably one of the only ones that are out there that are free if you go look it up inside of Google. Now, I used this vector graphic program for about two years, and I was actually pretty good at it. And, you know, if I needed a change to a graphic, um, you know, I could make it. But what I did realize with that was that if I wanted a change to a graphic or someone had sent me a graphic, that if I was doing it in this free open source software, it sometimes wouldn't read the file because most people were doing things in Photoshop. Most people were doing vector graphics in Adobe Illustrator and this open source software just wasn't working. It wasn't converting the files over right. And I, you know, I was missing out on jobs. People were asking me to, you know, I was like, I can do that because they would see the graphics that I was doing. And then it turned out to be that this free open source software just wasn't working out for me. It was very difficult. In fact, when you're using something like open source software, whether that be free open source software for audio or graphics or video, not all the times will you get all of the features that you are looking to do. You'll see someone else's piece of content and you'll say, I want to do it that way. And then you go to a free open source software and it doesn't do it or it takes a long, much, much longer to do. And that's where I don't want you to waste your time. I want you to learn the skill set immediately off the top learn now while you can all right so software with free open source software ended up crashing when i was trying to edit my own graphics someone else's graphics because there were operating system updates whether it was mac os or you were on windows i was on windows back in the day even then when i was using a windows program those programs were crashing, those free free open source softwares were crashing in Windows, and then I tried to do them in Mac when I moved over to a Mac, and they just were not working the way that I needed them to work. And they just kept crashing. And this did this for about, oh, I'd say up to four years before I decided to go ahead and learn you know, how to use graphics and Adobe Illustrator. And by all means, I wasn't perfect at it. I was just looking up a couple of YouTube videos here and there, and I was, you know, I was just getting the basics done. All right. So then I decided that I wanted to move my WordPress site over into Kajabi. At this time, I had started really getting serious about wanting to develop a a side hustle. And that side hustle, of course, is what you're hearing right here. It's all about the podcast therapist. It's the YouTube channel. uh, It's my website. It's building out digital products, all that. And all that was housed on Kajabi. And Kajabi was a very basic site back then. It was the only site or is one of the only sites where you could develop uh training software for or training programs for people who wanted to come in and learn from you but that's all it did it was just a training website it was where you, it was like teachable like you just put your content up there and you drove people from your wordpress site over to your kajabi membership site and that's where they took your training course so at the time my graphics on Kajabi were very basic. I started using Canva instead. So I broke away from the free open source software, started using Canva, and I found that Canva was very useful for certain things. I mean, it's a great program. Believe it or not, Canva, they've done a lot of improvements to Canva. But what I found was that it was useful for social graphics. But when it came down to things that I wanted to take to the next level. It was very basic in terms of graphic design. You had to search for certain things inside of Canva. Maybe you had to pay a dollar for a graphic that you wanted to embed into your main graphic. And that wasn't a problem for me. That's how Canva makes their money. They're a business. And I don't disagree with that. I think it's actually a really good thing that they do that. But it wasn't what I was looking for in terms of graphic design. It was limited on design functionality in terms of gradients on words. Gradients meaning it fades from one color to another color. Uh, it might make, you know, it might make like a, a little shine or a sheen on, uh, you know, a series of words if you want that. It might have a gradient to it. If I wanted to bend the word, I couldn't do that too much inside of Canva. If I wanted to curve circles around and make a specific design, I couldn't do that. Coloring was okay. Uh, The positioning of graphics inside of another graphic might have been difficult. And that is just, 
that was just what I, I was struggling with. I wanted to do more with my graphics. So in the summer of 2019, that was when I really learned how to use Adobe Illustrator. 2019 was already a super difficult time for me. In fact, anyone who has ever talked to me about 2019, especially my uh, my supporters on Facebook, they were with me through that entire year. All of last year, they were, I mean, if you thought 2020 <laughs> was a difficult year, which it has been, I'm not going to say it hasn't been a difficult year for any of us. But tw my 2019 really prepared me for 2020 because I had something going on every single month of the year other than maybe two months out of the year. I mean, I could get really deep into it. But it turned out to be the majority of those things were home repair, repair, uh, home repair issues that I was having to attend to. It was a home repair hell for me between the month of January through May. I had a refrigerator go out. I had walls that were crumbling because I live in a condo complex where they were watering on the outside. and The water was leaking on the inside of my house and the wall was crumbling on the inside leaking. I had electrical problems. I had so much going on all the way up until May of 2019. And then June rolled around and I was able to finally take a little bit of a break. In fact, I could start building more content for my YouTube channel. But it wasn't until the end of June, and I remember this like it was yesterday because I know exactly when it happened. It was the first week of July because 4th of July was coming up and I came into my condo and I noticed that the air conditioning, it was now starting to kick on a little bit more here in the Arizona desert. So I noticed the air conditioning was cycling on and off it would run for like four seconds and then it would turn off and then would run for four seconds and then would turn off and it would do that constantly and i was like well this isn't enough to cool the house i mean either there's something wrong with the thermostat or there's a problem with something else that is technical and as you know in arizona the temperatures can reach anywhere between 117 and 120 and that happens that starts happening in july and this is going to be going to be a problem i had to get an air conditioning tech out to fix that particular problem that was going on so i needed to pay for ac repairs so what i ended up doing is i called up uh, someone that i knew and he came out and he's like look this isn't going to end up costing you eleven hundred dollars to fix you have a problem with the motors these motors are so old, they have never been replaced. So just a little background on my place. I live in an older area of uh, Phoenix. It's called Uptown uh, Phoenix, and I live in these older condos. Everyone who lives here loves the location. The location is great, but the buildings are very old. And if you have not done the maintenance on the building, <laughs> things start to break down. So what ended up happening was that the motors that were inside the air conditioner blower, they hadn't been replaced since the place was built. This place was built in the 60s. And there was a note on the motor that ended up saying that you had to oil the motor every month. <laughs> so think about it. I didn't know any of that. So it's very likely, yeah, the motor was done. But the biggest problem was that those blowers and those blower fans, they didn't make them. So this guy had to come into my house, take apart the entire blower itself because you could not find them anywhere. Take them back to his shop, clean them up because whoever lived here before I li moved in and who knows how many people have lived here since then. Someone was smoking in here. You could see all the tar just disgusting on the fan blades. So he had to go clean this. So this was going to cost about $1,000, probably could have cost 2000 I think he gave me the friend discount. And when he told me the bill of how much it was going to cost, he said $1,100. That is the quote that I'm going to be giving you on this particular fix. But it's going to take about two and a half to three weeks. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, this is not good. Like I have to live in this place. And what do I have to do? How am I going to stay cold? Well, luckily, I already had a portable air conditioner unit for my place. And that this is where it came down to me learning how to build out a brand new skill. 
So I had a Facebook, well, I had, I still have a Facebook supporter program. I started the Facebook supporter program for my radio uh, station, I guess, fans. I started that back in January of 2019, and it was by accident. And someone ended up supporting me. They paid five bucks. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Someone gave me five bucks. Soon it turned from one person to five people to 10 people. And then it just, it just grew and mushroomed out. And it turned out to be something that ended up saving my ass in 2019 as all of these things started to happen. They, as they all started to like fall apart around me. But I needed, it wasn't enough to cover the $1,100 bill, $1,100 bill that I needed to pay my friend for fixing the blowers and the air conditioning unit as well. So that's when I decided that I wanted to make a shirt for those who were a part of my supporter program, but I needed a graphic designer. This is when I dove head first into graphic design. So from the from the first, I'm sorry, so from the second week of July all the way into the third week of July, this is when it is the hottest in Arizona. This is where we get 117 degrees outside and it turns to be about 95 degrees inside. This isn't like Florida heat where you're just getting the humidity. I hear that's a miserable Arizona heat. It just makes it stuffy. So what I ended up doing is I boxed myself in. This is how this is how legit the problem was. I boxed myself in my bedroom, my master bedroom with a desk, the portable air conditioner, blackout curtains, an extra box fan. And that's where I lived for two weeks. And in that room, that is where I just dove head first into YouTube videos on how to use Adobe Illustrator. Because The bill was $1,100. I only had about $300 to cover for that particular repair. I actually had extra money in my bank account, but that was really more about emergencies than anything else. I needed that money for other areas that I needed to repair into the house. And so this is where graphic design and learning how to do graphic design started. So I was already paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud and I just wanted a simple design with words on it. My group happens to call themselves the Shan Clan family. And somewhere in the conversations of the live feeds, we brought up the idea that they're the original gangsters. They're the original ones that are a part of my group. And so they said, we'll make a shirt that just says OGSCF. Hashtag OGSCF. And we'll see what we can do. And I was like, well, I want to make sure that the design is good enough for you. And they said, just go ahead and make it. And I said, okay, we'll do that. So I started researching YouTube videos for basic tutorials on how to create graphics and graphic design and how to graphic design t-shirts. And I spent those two weeks in July in a hot bedroom with the lights off, with an air conditioner blowing on my back, a fan blowing from the other side of the room to try to circulate the air, ordering takeout, Uber Eats, and learning what I could to be a graphic designer or to create graphics for a t-shirt. And I just studied. I took notes in a notebook. I had a friend on the phone with me, sitting while I was sitting in the dark, encouraging me to build out these t-shirts. Would I have enough to pay for the AC repair bill? How much would I charge for each t-shirt? All of this was research that I was having to go through within two weeks because it was getting really hot. And then once we would jump into August, it was going to get even hotter. This is where I really was put to the test of how to develop and learn a new skill. So the last week in July, the AC guy comes. Ricky is his name. So when Ricky came over, he goes in and he starts putting the motor in and uh, he fixes it. Everything looks super clean, looks great. But he has to add 
on another hundred dollars because he saw that the coils that were on this particular unit were filled with who knows what could have been mold, could have been smoke, could have just crap. It was an he had to clean it off with some special degreaser. That was another hundred dollars. So we're talking twelve hundred dollars to fix this AC. Within the two weeks after I developed and created the T-shirt. So we say like a week and a half of being on YouTube, learning those things. And then, of course, another half of a week building out the T-shirts and getting them up into a a store through Shopify and then promoting it up onto my promote my Facebook supporter group. Would you believe. That the cost of the repair, which was twelve hundred dollars. I sold a thousand dollars worth of T-shirts. I could afford the extra two hundred dollars. I had the money, but those people saved my ass. They would not have saved my ass if I had not taken the initiative to sit down in front of YouTube and learn how to build out graphics. That's when. I realized that graphic design could really open up the world for myself. That's when I realized that graphic design could open up the world for podcasters. This was a huge moment for me. This is where everything kind of came into clear view. And from there, I started building out more merchandise. The Area 51, I don't know if you remember the Area 51 thing that was going on. You might have seen some of the images that I have shared out onto not only my personal Instagram, maybe maybe I'll share it onto the Podcast Therapist Instagram. But there was an image where I had created a t-shirt that said uh, Area 51 Raider Squad. This was when everyone was trying to jump onto that whole bandwagon of selling merchandise. But for me, yeah, it was about selling merchandise. My audience really didn't like it, but for me... It was about being able to go into Adobe Illustrator and learn how to build those graphics and become a better graphic designer. Learn how to use the uh, the tools inside the application itself and become better at them. I went through and I started saving YouTube videos that I found online into a special private playlist. If I couldn't remember how to do a specific skill inside of Adobe Illustrator, I referred back to that particular video and then I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that. And then I would execute and develop. So I started making more and more things, more t-shirts, hoodies, hats, socks, beach towels, ornaments. I mean, you name it. It opened the world up for me. Then from there, it was like, well, you know, if I can do this. I can really start making my website look a little bit more legit with de- decent graphics. <laughs> and that's that's when things opened up. And I started making more graphics. Maybe I got a little more crazier than normal, but I soon found my footing on how to develop a better graphic using Adobe Illustrator. So I want to go into this next part. If you are someone who is thinking, yeah, I can do this. All I need to do is take the time to learn it. You maybe don't have, maybe 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 you have more time than I did because I didn't have all the time. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have three months to do it. I had two weeks to get this $1,100, $1,200 into the AC repair man's hand. And I turned out, it turned out that I ended up getting a thousand dollars exactly for this particular repair saved my ass. But for you, maybe you have a little more time. This is a perfect time to start learning how to open up the opportunities to create these graphics, to share onto social media, to share on your website so that you can get people to see that you have a podcast and you can promote that podcast on those social platforms. That is what you will need to do when you start podcasting. The biggest question I get from podcasters is how do I get more listeners to my podcast? There are a number of things you can do to get 
podcast listeners. But I think that one of the things that you're really missing out on as a podcaster is developing the skill of being a graphic designer. Most people will tell you, go to Fiverr.com, go to Canva and use those those outlets to develop your graphics. But if you're someone who is like me, if you're creative, if you love to develop your own graphic because you have the inspiration to develop something that fits you, you have to build a new skill set. And building that skill set in programs that make your dreams, make your visions come to life. Here are some things that I wished I would have known before designing graphics in Adobe Illustrator. Now, this can go for any program that you want to use, but I recommend that you use Adobe Illustrator, a vector graphic program like Adobe Illustrator. There are all kinds of tutorials on YouTube that you can use for this. Number one, excuse me. Number one, if you want cool fonts, you have to download them. Most people don't know this. They don't know that whether you're using Windows or Mac, they go, how do you get those cool fonts? Well, I didn't know this in the beginning when I started doing all this research. In fact, the videos that I was researching on Adobe Illustrator of how to like make certain designs, make certain bends on words or alter an image. They didn't say anything about fonts. And I didn't realize that you had to download fonts. In fact, a friend of mine um, had told me years ago that he went to specific websites to get different fonts for his designs. And then that, that was like, boom, when I started designing, I was like, oh yeah, I, he remember he mentioned that website. The website that I'm talking about is called defont.com. You may have heard of it. Maybe you haven't. I'm sure there's many others out there. I think there's, uh, what is it? I think it's font squirrel or something like that. There's all kinds of them out there, but defont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. This is a website where you can get free fonts and download them onto your computer and then put them into your font. Well, on Mac, it's called a font book. You could put them in your font book on Mac. I think it's something, it's obviously something else on Windows. Sometimes you need permission to use those fonts for selling t shirts or building out graphics. Other times, or if you're just using it for personal use, you can just use it. But sometimes you need permission to use fonts if you want to use for your website, if you want to use it for your merchandise, all those things. Now, then you jump into the other areas where maybe you want a cooler font, a different font, a font that is uh, a little more unique. And so I started doing searches on Google of how to get these fonts. And I started coming up with different designers. I came up with different uh, websites that uh, that shared their fonts. Uh, Tom Chalky was one of the guys that I went to initially whenever I was getting my fonts. He had font packs that you could buy, whether that be for $20. It could have been for, you know, 50 bucks. I mean, I can't even remember how much I paid for some of those fonts. But I ended up getting those font packs from Tom Chalky. And they gave you the full usage rights of those fonts. You could put them on merchandise or whatever, your website, whatever it may be. And that was really where it my world started to open up even more. Then later on in the year, I ended up getting a new client, a new podcasting client. And I needed to get music for that client so that when we were building out their podcast, they had some theme music for each di- episode. It was different for each episode. And as I was going in, I didn't want to buy theme music each time I built out a podcast. I mean, sometimes, you know, if you jump in and you're trying to get royalty free music to use for a podcast, it can cost you anywhere between 10 bucks to 25 bucks. And I was like, I just do not have the money for that. But then I came upon and I discovered that when I was using Audio Jungle, Audio Jungle had a subscription program called Envato Elements. And I started using Envato Elements. I paid for a subscription for Envato Elements. Now, this is for someone who is really going to be using. I guess you could say assets or digital assets constantly, whether you're talking about music for your podcast, you're talking about stock video, you're talking about stock photo, you're talking about 
uh, you know, it could be different graphics themselves, but you could also download fonts from Envato Elements where you're paying $25 for a font. You could pay a subscription to Envato Elements and get all of these assets that will help you out. That is what I use. And that comes in so handy. I built out different websites. I built out a trucking website earlier this year using Envato Elements. If I would have done this before, it would have cost me so much. It would ha- I would have to give an estimate based on how much it would have cost to build out the website. But since I had Envato Elements, I knew exactly what my charge and surcharge could be for building out that website. So Envato Elements is what I use. If you have the money to do that, you'll get your subscription and you get all those assets and you can incorporate them into your podcast, podcast artwork, podcast video, whatever it may be. It's so easy. So easy. If I would have known that, I would have paid the $200, $300 for an Envato Elements subscription. It comes in so handy. Number two. I know we were just on number one, but number two. Things I wish I would have known before designing graphics in Adobe Illustrator. You can get logo designs, which are really just tools of the trade, you know, because you're going to need some type of logo and maybe it's something that is very simple. Maybe you need a different, uh, a different look to how you want your logo to look. You can go to the Vector Lab. That's one that I went to. Vector Lab can be a little bit expensive, but it could be worth it for your project. I mean, everything that I do is already in Adobe, I'm sorry, it's already in Envato Elements. Vector Lab allows you to download different graphics, like multiple graphics with their packs. Sometimes the packs are gonna cost you about 80 bucks. Other times they may cost you 50 bucks. And sometimes I think, I can't remember if they do, if they did it back then, there was a website that I had found where they said you could do a subscription to their website and you get some of the packs, but then they teach you how to use uh, some of the programs on how to alter those uh, different graphics. I think Vector Lab was one of those. So getting logos can be done through the Vector Lab or just you can go to Envato Elements. Number three of the things that I wish I would have known before designing graphics in Adobe Illustrator. Number three, learning the shortcuts in Adobe Illustrator may take some practice, but it's totally worth it. It's totally worth it. It took me a long time to learn how to do the shortcuts in Adobe Audition when it came to editing audio. So I knew what to expect when it came down to using Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop. I knew what I was getting into. I knew that Adobe followed this basic principle of something called layers in audio, in video, in photo, in graphic design, everything. But I knew that there were different shortcuts for each program, but I knew the basic understanding of that we are working in something called layers. As you will know, when you're editing audio and you're layering one piece of audio on top of the other, that's what you get when it comes down to mixing down to a final product. I wish I would have known that. It took me a long time to figure that out. So learning the shortcuts in Adobe Illustrator may take some practice, but it's totally worth it. Number four, some things that you are doing have to be done in Photoshop first, or they can be done entirely inside of Photoshop. You don't have to totally rely on Adobe Illustrator. You can do most of the things in Photoshop, but sometimes you need Illustrator, sometimes you need Photoshop. I use Illustrator more because I have more flexibility to create different graphic designs. We're not talking about dealing with photos, we're talking about dealing with graphics. Now, again, I'm not a pro inside of Photoshop and Illustrator. I I know enough to be dangerous. But my process is my process. Your process may be a little bit different. My process for cutting out images starts in Photoshop. And then it's expanded out into Illustrator. So if there is an image of myself where I'm in a crowd, but I want to cut everyone out that is around me because I thought that the, the pose that I was holding was really cool, but I want that pose only. I take it into Photoshop and I cut everyone out. I'm sure I probably could do it in Illustrator, but I think it's more common inside of Photoshop. 
and I edit everything out in Photoshop, save that edited image and then put it into Adobe Illustrator and incorporate it into my final product image. That's how I do things. Number five of the things I wished I would have known before designing graphics in Adobe Illustrator. You have more control over your vector graphics than with open source software. That's just it. You have more control to fix or alter the things that you're looking to create. Maybe there is an image that is a PNG image that you want to turn into vector. You can do it in Adobe Illustrator very easily. Typically, PNGs are the image file types that you're going to be using to upload a lot to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, your website, all that. And when you're talking about individual pieces of graphics that need to be altered, it makes it so easy in Adobe Illustrator. Number six, you can create multiple canvases for one design. This is where I, I wish, I wish I would have known this from the start. Why are canvases important? So if you're using Canva, the program Canva, you can create different canvases for different art pieces of artwork. So if you jump into Canva and you create a piece of artwork and then you say, well, I want a variation of this particular design that I want to create. You all, all you do is you go into Canva and you create a copy of that particular design. Then it opens up a brand new tab. And then, of course, you can go in and then you can make an alteration to that particular design. So now you have two designs. And let's say you want a third design. Then you make a copy of that design. And now you have three designs and you can make an, the alterations to that. So now you have three different designs, but they're all separated out. And that's fine. You can totally do that inside of Canva. To me, a little more difficult, a few more steps, a little painful, and you're dealing with having to fight with the internet, an internet connection or a website speed, something like that. When I moved over into Adobe Illustrator, it made it so easy because the canvas that they share with you whenever you open up the app application, they just show you one canvas. That's all it is. But you can create multiple canvases within that one file itself if you want to create variations for that one design that you're creating. So as an example, I create podcast art for this particular podcast, the podcast therapist. I went through a different very I went through a few different variations of creating artwork for the podcast therapist, but I needed to see two different variations. The, ver the, the artwork that you're seeing now has red lettering on it. It says the, and then of course, podcast is in red and then therapist is in black with a stroke around the, uh, the text. The stroke is meaning like it's the outline of the text. So that should be red and then the text itself on therapist should be black. So it should be therapist in black and then the outline should be in red. The outline would be called the stroke. So I had that design and then I made a variation of that design where podcasts look like it was meters, audio meters on a mixing board where it was green at the bottom and then it had a gradient, a gradient meaning that it faded into a different color. So I had a gradient from green to yellow and then into red, like peeking out. Peaking out meaning that your audio is way too hot. So I had that variation of that. But I didn't have to create it in a separate file. I created it within the same file itself on two different canvases. So I was able to get an idea of what this artwork was going to look like. I shared it with my sister and a couple of other people. And I said, which one do you like the most? And they said, I like the one that is red. The, the one that is all complete red. It does, you know. The other one that that has the colors, it's cool, but it kind of looks as though you're, you know, it's like a country's flag or something like that. And I said, OK, I get that. So I stuck with the one that's red. So when I stuck with that one, then I said, OK, what do I need next? I said, OK, I now need the SEO image art for the Web page itself. 
So when I mentioned to you the podcast therapist.com slash podcast, if you were to go and take that link and paste it into a phone message, you were to paste it into Facebook, paste it into Twitter, you're going to see that that podcast artwork that came from a square, normally it would be a square, is now a rectangle. So the way I did that was that I copied the image of what my original artwork was and I pasted it onto another canvas. There is a function inside of Adobe Illustrator where you can add different artboards. So if you need to go in and learn how to build artboards, just go do a Google search for it. You can find it. But it doesn't stop there. I went on and I created more images, a Facebook page cover photo for my Facebook page. I created a Twitter page uh, cover photo. Canvases allow you to create different variations of the artwork that you are creating so that you don't have to go in and have multiple files. This particular file is just saved as the podcast therapist graphic design. That's all it is. So when I open that file in Adobe Illustrator, it shows up with all the different variations and the different canvases of that design that I can customize as I wish, really. So if I'm doing a podcast with someone else on their podcast and they need a different design or they need me to customize a design, I just go to that file, find the SEO image, find the podcast cover art, find whatever image they need. And then I can customize it to say, you know, I'm showing up on their podcast or whatever it may be. You can do this in Canva, but it takes a lot longer. And then you're struggling trying to find the right design. That's where I found a lot of difficulty with that. So creating multiple canvases for one design is super, super helpful. So with that, I want to share with you, I do have a training on how to use Adobe Illustrator for podcasters themselves. These are all the things that I ended up learning along the way. And I thought, well, you know what? Everyone needs to know how to do this stuff. If you're a podcaster, you need to know how to do this stuff. I mean, I don't know if you need to. But developing a brand new skill to become, I don't want to say lethal, but to become a force to be reckoned with so that when you're developing the audio that you create for your podcast, that you can accompany it with a quality piece of graphics. Does that make sense? Piece of graphics or a piece of graphic or a graphic. (laughs) Clearly, English is not my first language. I mean, does that sound okay to you? Does that sound like something that you should do for your podcast? Do you want to create a podcast where you're just pumping out audio and that's it? Or do you want to create a podcast where people find visually that your podcast is appealing and they go, oh, I want to listen to that podcast because not only do the visuals come across appealing, but now I can go and hear what, how they sound, what makes this podcast appealing. Someone who's going to come across your podcast more than likely is going to come across a visual if they're not already in the Apple podcast app or Spotify. And even then, they're still looking at your podcast photo, your cover art photo, and determining whether or not they want to listen to that podcast. Then they're going to go to the description and see if that description is worth their time to listen to the podcast. So it's important that we build a new skill outside of audio because they go very hand in hand. That's why I created my training, Adobe Illustrator for podcasters. So if you go to the podcasttherapist.com slash graphics training, and that's all one word, you're going to be taken to the page where you can jump into this training. If you use the code graphics 43 you're going to get 43% off the list price of this particular training which i believe is it's like $47 so you're going to be getting it almost close to half price and you can learn everything that i talked about in this particular episode about building out graphics i will walk you through the basics now you can go to youtube but you're going to spend more time searching for the videos that you know I, that's what i did i spent way too much time in youtube 
during those two weeks that I was doing the research, I wish I just would have had that training where it just showed me, hey, this is what you're doing. This is how you create the bends. This is how you get your fonts. This is where this is what you're doing with Adobe Illustrator. Here are all the menus that you need with Adobe Illustrator. That's what I broke down in that particular training. So again, go to podcast thepodcasttherapist.com slash graphics training and enter in the code graphics43 to get 43% off the training. If you are interested in creating graphics to accompany the sound of your podcast to get more people to be attracted to the visual aspect of your podcast. I certainly hope that what I am sharing with you is going to be useful for you to develop quality podcast content. Unnecessary explanations coming up next. Therapist. Right now, you might be in the middle of the research phase of launching your podcast. Maybe you've gotten some equipment, signed up for a Zoom account, and have recorded a few podcast episodes. But what steps do you need to take when it comes to a successful podcast launch? Would you believe the biggest mistake podcasters make is the launch sequence? Seriously, just like a space shuttle has a sequence to put astronauts into space, podcasts have sequences to put a podcast in the marketplace successfully. That's why I created the Podcast Launch Checklist. After helping numerous clients build their podcasts, I developed a step-by-step guide to help podcast creators just like you have a clean launch sequence without wasting time. The Podcast Launch Checklist is a 12-step sequence that walks you through the pre-launch, mid-launch, and post-launch process with specific steps and instructions that will save you time. If you're tired of walking around in the dark trying to figure out everything that comes with the Podcast Launch, you can grab the Podcast Launch Checklist today. Visit thepodcasttherapist.com slash PLC and use the code PODTHERAPIST, all one word, to get 25% off this checklist today. Unnecessary. Explanations. The podcast is unnecessary explanations. You can always reach out to me at the podcast therapist.com slash podcast. And of course, when you go onto that page, you can scroll down and see that there is a contact section or contact me section. You could find me on the different platforms, Facebook, you could find me on Twitter, uh, also Instagram. But what I would really love, what I would really love, especially because you're in the podcasting space and what I would really like to encourage to you is that you leave me a voicemail. If there a question that you have about podcasting, it could be about podcasting, it could be about graphic design, it could be about social media, social media marketing, it could be about a number of things. Uh, just leave me a voicemail and, um, you know, just... Your, your genuine inquiry, it, it could be anything that is something that I am doing personally. That's what unnecessary explanations is really all about. I can give you an unnecessary explanation that is uh, about something that is not even podcast related and I'll be willing to answer it for you. But uh, uh, for right now, we're going to still kind of keep it, I guess, podcast related. But again, I want to encourage you to get go on over there and leave me a voice message. Again, that is the podcast therapist dot com slash podcast. So in today's unnecessary explanation, I want to answer a question that I get a lot on my YouTube channel and that really focuses around podcasters wanting to get their podcast out more to uh, more people. And maybe they think that there is a different area in which they can gather more listeners. And there are, there are different ways and different areas which you can get more listeners. But when they come to me with this particular question, they're specifically talking about radio itself. And because I am in the radio industry, you would think that I have some knowledge on how to get a podcast that shows up uh, on podcast on on radio airwaves, whether that be the AM band or the FM band. And this can be something that uh, that does happen in certain markets and different radio markets around the nation. I don't know how much this can really apply to international audiences, whether you're in Canada, maybe you're in the UK. Uh, I don't know, France, the, you know, the EU. I don't know if this is really going to apply. I can just only give you my perspective on what I see um, the trend is as far as podcasts on radio. So just know that when I'm sharing the information about podcasts on radio, I'm sharing it from the perspective of my local market and how my local market and radio cluster looks at podcasting 
for the airwaves, for AM, FM airwaves. So the question, let's go back to that question. How do I get my podcast on to the, the airwaves, AM, FM airwaves? So if you were to do that, or how do I, how do I pitch someone to get my podcast on the airwaves? We would have to talk about first the pitch and who you need to get in contact with and whether or not it is worth your time or even the person's time that you're going to be pitching the podcast to. So the person that you're probably going to be going to would be a program director in the radio markets. Now, I'm going to be the first one to tell you here, and this is, I guess, completely subjective, but I'm just going to be the one to tell you that if you're trying to go into the market, say like Phoenix, and you try to pitch someone in the Phoenix market, excuse me, likely no one is going to take that on. And there's a, there's a specific reason why we do that. Because podcasting in on the AM FM airwaves on the AM FM airwaves is not something that we do. It's just not part of the company itself. Podcasting is, but po- it's just solely as podcasting. There's a podcasting division within my company, but as far as putting a podcast onto the airwaves, not likely going to happen. That goes for music radio. That goes for uh, sports radio, talk radio. You name it, okay? It's political radio. You're likely not going to get a podcast on those platforms. Now, does it mean that it's not impossible? It's it's impossible? No, it's not impossible to get a podcast on airwaves. I know that there are some podcasts in other markets that do this. Phoenix just doesn't does not happen to be one of them, nor will they consider that. I think. I think. I can't be the one to give you the full answer on that, but I think. But going to other markets might be an option. It may be a tougher get, though, because program directors, they are looking for specific things when it comes down to the programming itself. And when it comes down to the programming, when I talk about programming, I'm talking about how you parse out the content of your podcast. Likely, whenever we go in and we create a podcast, it I try to make my podcast all sound the same in terms of organization, in terms of parsing them out, in terms of what it looks like in full. So the reason why you see, or the reason why you hear in the podcast therapist that there are breaks is that if there is that opportunity that I want to get on the radio airwaves, I have this ability to parse out the different segments that could be put onto the radio airwaves. But there are other reasons why I parse out my particular podcast itself. But in radio, this is what we look for. We're looking for particular segments. Typically, most segments are going to last anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes because they have to account for commercials to play on their airwaves. And typically, I, at least I know from the Phoenix market, and since I've been in radio for 20 years, we've had anywhere between two to three commercial breaks within an hour. Early in my career, we were doing three commercial breaks at the rock station that I was working with. And there were, I think there was like five minutes of of, uh, commercials uh, for the first two breaks. And then there was like three minutes of commercials for the third break. I think, I can't remember, it was so long ago, but I do know that we had three commercial breaks within an hour. These days, it's two commercial breaks per hour, uh, separated by 20 minutes of music. So it's like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of music, commercial break, 15, 20 minutes of music, commercial break, and then 15, 20 minutes. I think the last break, after the last break, there's more music that happens after that. And there's all these little elements that we put into radio. So your podcast, which more than likely have to be parsed out and account for the commercial time that is given for AM, FM radio. So that is kind of important. <laughs> you have to think about that. And radio stations are likely going to edit out your content if they don't if it's going to not fit. So as an example, there is a show that I run on Friday nights at KUPD. It is called Full Metal uh Full Metal Jackie or Full Metal Friday Night uh with Full Metal Jackie. And her show is accounted for for two hours. It starts at 10 p.m. and it ends at midnight. And the content that she is creating, you can see how it is created. It's about 15 minutes of content, whether that be music or an interview that she's doing. It's about 15 minutes of content mixed with interviews and music. 
And then she gives time for us to play our commercials. And then there's another maybe 15 to 20 minutes of uh, interviews with music. And then we go into another commercial set. And that will that is how it happens every single time. She is someone that is broadcast all over the nation on rock stations, but now has this ability to create content in a specific amount of time so that it accounts for the commercials for the radio station. So you have to think about that when it comes down to your podcast. Maybe you do get in on a a smaller market. You are able to reach out to a, a program director and they're like, yeah, we are looking for that. Likely you're not going to get your program on probably prime time unless maybe maybe possibly they're looking for a spot maybe your content better be pretty good though i will tell you that most radio people are pretty on point when it comes down to content and what's good and what's not so if your content is not on point then it's probably not going to be worth it for you likely they're going to put you on on a saturday morning your podcast is going to air on a saturday morning or a sunday morning maybe it's a sunday night when typically when there's less listeners. So it's a harder get. And if you ask me, is it worth trying to get on AM FM radio? If you're asking me, this is just my own personal opinion. This is not an opinion of the radio station. It's not worth it. I would focus solely and specifically on promoting my podcast through the social and digital means. I would focus on building out an email list. I would focus on building out a social media following. I would focus on making a better program. That's what I would end up doing. I think once you implement those elements and you build out content that makes your content stand out, that's when you start to get the listeners that will start coming and listening to your podcast and say, hey, I think this is really quality content. I want more. Can you give me more? You won't need to be on AM, FM radio. You can just be you on your own platform. You're paying for the hosting. You're paying for the website. You might as well start figuring out a way to monetize your podcast. Whether that be through sponsorships, starting a membership site. So focusing on radio, AM, FM, trying to get on there, probably not worth your time. Really not worth your time if you're asking me. Don't do it. You're going to spend more time trying to reach out to program directors and they're them telling you no. You might get a yes, but more than likely they're going to tell you no because they have a specific agenda that they have to follow according to the company. Each company is different. You have to follow their rules. That's what I think is the information that you need to have if you're thinking about going into that realm. So that's really all I have to say about this particular topic. I mean, again, I want to invite you to ask more questions at the podcasttherapist.com slash podcast. Go down to the contact me section and leave me a voicemail and I'll be happy to answer it on unnecessary explanations. Or maybe if the question really needs to be played, I'll maybe play it in the beginning part of this podcast. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular episode about graphic design and my thought process, a, a, a look into my brain about how I see building out new skills, why you should build out new skills in the areas of graphic design. This just isn't going to apply for graphic design. It's going to apply for a lot of things. And I think that is where it makes you a stronger force in your particular program and niche. So if you have something you want to say, a comment, again, I want to invite you to go ahead and leave me that voicemail. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you are building quality content that makes an impact with your listeners. And I will see you next time. Take care. Cast Therapist. Mixdown Media Productions.